Welcome to the Legal Roundtable Voter Education Edition. I'm Shaniqua Gray. Election Day is November 6th, and tonight we are joined by the Louisiana Secretary of State, Mr. Tom Shedler, and he'll be here answering all the questions that you have about voting and the upcoming election to help make sure your vote counts. And then later on the Legal Roundtable, we'll be joined by Judge John Michael Guidry of the Louisiana Court of Appeal. He's a candidate for the Louisiana Supreme Court, and he'll be here talking about his candidacy and also he'll be talking about the Voting Rights Act and whether it's still relevant today in light of what are being called voter suppression laws that are being passed in various states across the country. It's all about voter education tonight right here right now on the Legal Roundtable Voter Education Edition. If you're a lawyer and you would like to be a guest on the Legal Roundtable TV show, call Shaniqua Gray at 225-772-1819 or email to the Legal Roundtable at Herzog.com. back to the Legal Roundtable Voter Education Edition. In this segment, we're talking to Louisiana Secretary of State Tom Shedler, and he's answering all the questions you need to know about voting and the upcoming election to help make sure you're able to get out, exercise that right to vote on November 6, 2012. Thank you so much, Secretary Pleasure. Shedler, Thank you very much for coming on the show. We know we have an election coming up on November 6. Um, most people probably know that, that the President of the United States will be on that ballot, Big but election. in addition in addition to that, there are a number of local, state, and other national positions on that ballot as well, including Mayor President, um, various members of the Metro Council, and so forth. So I really wanted to make sure that people understood this is an important election yes, they're it, coming it out. Yes, more than just presidential. If that's yes. That should be enough reason, but exactly. that is more than that. And uh, exactly. even have some constitutional amendments. Yes, we have some constitutional amendments. So hopefully people will go to the website right. and they will take a look at those constitutional amendments because you really need to study those to know how you want to vote. So, um, Secretary Shedder, let's start from the very okay. beginning, and let's start with the basic qualifications to be eligible to vote in the state of Louisiana. You just need to be a citizen. You need to be uh, of both the state and the U.S., and you need to be 18 years of old in order to vote. But let mm -hmm. me clarify that. You can register to vote at 17 mm -hmm. as long as the election that you're going to cast your first ballot in, you will be 18. So okay. that's just, you know, our last day to qualify, I mean, uh, as a voter is October 9th for the November mm -hmm. 6th election. It's very important. You need, to, you need to qualify or register to vote before October 9th. Mm -hmm. But if you're 17 and you're going to turn uh, 18 on November 1st, you can go ahead and register and you can vote. Okay, okay, now I know you cannot be under an order of conviction of a felony. Yes. So now exactly what that means, because I know some states do not ever allow a person who's been convicted of a felony right. to vote, but that's not the case that's in Louisiana. That's not the case in Louisiana. Okay. You cannot vote when you are convicted mm -hmm. of a felony while you're serving time and or when you get out maybe a halfway house or, or uh, any other uh, restricted mm -hmm. uh, uh, capacitation or what have you. Okay. But as soon as you complete it with that, you can register to vote. Matter of fact, the Department of Corrections, we supply them regularly voter registration. So mm -hmm. you have that in your packet, and if they lose it, you just go to register a voter. But once you're finished mm -hmm. with that conviction, you've, you've served your time, and okay. you've made peace with society, and you register and to vote. And they should know, because as you indicated, they get that packet they when get they leave. They it when they, they leave. Okay. And, and the only caveat, one of the misconceptions is, that we talked about earlier, that if I get arrested leaving here tonight, mm -hmm. and I can't parole myself out or bail myself out, excuse me, and I'm still in, I have not been convicted yet. Right. So I can, with the sheriff's signature mm -hmm. and uh, attesting that I'm not convicted yet of a, of a felony, not right. misdemeanor, felony, right. I can ask for a mail ballot sent to prison and I can okay. actually vote there. And, that, and that's important and that's something I was going to talk about a little bit later, but while we're on it, let's just make sure people understand that if you are incarcerated, you would vote absentee just like anybody else who might be away provided you have not actually been convicted of that felony. That is correct. And the okay. only caveat to that is the sheriff, you have to get the sheriff okay. to okay. actually sign this affidavit that you're not convicted yet and you are there. Exactly. Okay, okay. now let's talk about actual registration. Um, you know, there are various ways in which a person can register. I know you can register 
register in person by mail or online. Now, could you tell us exactly what documents a person needs to be able to register to vote? Because most people know that if they take their driver's license or state ID, they can register. But in some instances, for people who don't have that, is there well, other documents? A birth certificate uh, is, is typically what's used in that particular instance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you had a passport, U.S. passport, that would be another. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that could be an extenuating circumstance with that. Okay. Military, potential ID. So there are other methods. Okay. And, and you can, uh, we will, I think, the second state in, this, in the right. country to allow uh, registration online. Okay. The only thing you give up. On, by doing that is that for the first vote you take, you have to vote in person because okay. they will re-verify that picture ID and that signature that you put okay. online. And, and that is the case also if you mail in your voter registration yes, also? Yes, right. Okay, so if and, you're and not And the other there, thing I want to point out, you know, uh, motor vehicle offices, libraries, mm -hmm. uh, school counselor's office, mm -hmm. uh, even social service offices uh, will have forms available, DHH, uh, mm -hmm. Department and Family and Child Support. Where is the, the main voter registration office located? That's the register of voters. Oh, right. Uh, and, and that's the primary place. I mm -hmm. mean, people say, well, where you register to vote? I mean, you, if you don't it think. It doesn't have to be. It, yeah, you register a voter. But there are other places that right. I just indicated. But okay. you go to the register of voters office. Each parish has a register of voter mm -hmm. in their parish building. Okay. And, of course, there's no cost to register. No, and, yes. um, and And registration must occur 30 days prior to the election. In this case. Of which you want to vote. So right. if you want to vote. At the, at, on the November presidential election, November 6th, you need to register to vote by October 9th. Okay, that's okay. great. Now let's talk about a few special eligibility issues, including students, because okay. you know that has made a lot of, it's had national attention right. on whether students can vote, where they can vote, and what documents they can use to prove who they are, whether or not they can use their student ID and so forth. What are the rules on okay. students? Louisiana does not allow at this point student IDs, and you know, to elaborate on that, uh, the reason is is the variety of student IDs mm -hmm. amongst you know you know uh, community colleges and what have you. I, I personally think the solution to that, mm -hmm. and one that I'm open to, uh, but the legislature would have to agree to that, is a, a standardized mm -hmm. uh, student ID, just like we have a driver's license that mm -hmm. can be used standardized. Southern University, Grambling University, right. LSU, Baton Rouge Junior College, I mean a uh, community college. Mm -hmm. That it's a standardized ID that we would have something of a validation on that with okay. a, like a dollar bill almost, but with the, I forgot the term, uh, you know what I'm talking right. about, which proves that it's not a forgery. Exactly. Now, when you say that you, they can't use the ID, you mean as the appropriate as the, identification to yes, actually vote? That's correct. They would okay. need, uh, you know, a passport, a military uh, uh, driver's license. And, and the other thing is that they have to vote in their precinct in which they register. Okay, and that would be on, in they, if they live in the dorm, the precinct where the college is located? If they're registered there. Right, if they if are they registered. registered in Hammond, Louisiana, oh, okay. they got to go to their precinct in Hammond, Louisiana. Okay. If they change it mm -hmm. to that, certainly, if that's their primary. And they can do that as yes, a student. Yes, absolutely. Okay. They can change their location now. They would change from, in the example I just gave Hammond, they, they registered in Tangipahoa Parish. Mm -hmm. They'd have to register now in East Baton Rouge Parish. And right. the good thing about in the state, our system automatically would cancel that in state. Okay. Now, um, when you think about students, you automatically think about people who are away, and that brings me to early voting and, of course, absentee voting. Early voting, of course, in Louisiana, we have we have a pretty nice right. length of time for early 79, voting. 79, bet between early voting and actual voting day, we have 79 and a half hours to vote in mm -hmm. And that's October 23rd through October 30th right. from 8.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. except that Sunday. Except so that's Sunday. seven full days of right. voting from Tuesday to Tuesday, and so that is quite a bit of time. And so absentee vote voting by mail, can anyone automatically yes. vote absentee? Or? Yes. Okay, and yeah, I mean, so they you don't need uh, the days of old. I mean, it's, I'm old enough to know mm -hmm. that. You used to have to, uh, you know, like illness or you were taking a long distance trip, and you used to have to prove that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, any okay. any reason. And those over 65 years of age mm -hmm. used to be you could get a two year, you can now get a life. You just okay. apply once, you automatically get all your ballots sent to your home. Uh, and the only thing I would urge, especially our elderly, mm -hmm. is, you know, be careful. We've had several instances on mail ballots in the home of frail elderly, mm -hmm. uh, not in a larger community like this, but smaller like villages or aldermen, smaller jurisdictions where you mm -hmm. maybe have only 100, 120 votes. You may know Miss Susie right. all her life. You go there and you're asking for a vote, and oh, by the way, can I help you fill out your, right. you, know, you need not, not tell you how they vote. Right, exactly. And we had an instance where literally someone uh, had 15 of those, had all the addresses, from his campaign headquarters. He didn't have enough sense to, and he had only wow. won by eight, and uh, what happened to him was uh, 
that, that they ended right, up not 15, being counted. That's correct. Wow. Well, um, and now another issue that's made national attention, and Louisiana actually is doing very well on this, and that's this question about the voter, uh, the identification yes, requirements that a person would need when they go to the polls to actually vote. Now, we know this state ID is going to be good. We know that a driver's license is going to be good. What if a person does not have state ID okay. or driver's license? Thank you very much. And I think that's Louisiana's secret why we've never been challenged. Right. The law has been in place since 1997. Uh, second uh, state in the country to do that. Uh, it's never been challenged. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying everybody loves it, but I'm just saying it's never been challenged. And I have great data for you on that. If you come, I gave you an example. I'm the commissioner. You come to me. Uh, you, you lost your driver's license. It was stolen, fell off a boat the day before. You, you, I ask you some specific questions, uh, name, uh, 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 date of birth, uh, social security number, mother's maiden name. Mm -hmm. If you answer those appropriately, and I'm able to verify that on the computer, you just they, you're given an affidavit and you attest to that and you sign that. You just swear you, that you are the person you say you are. Yes, you go in into the booth and you vote. Okay. And I will tell you to, you know, you got folks that like that, and then you got folks over on this side that don't like that. I know some people say it's a little liberal, but but let me tell you how I asked when I became Secretary of State, mm -hmm. even as interim, I had a study done by my fraud unit. Mm -hmm. We went into 50 parishes, and we looked at every single affidavit, and we verified the information against that and what the ROV register voter had, and even down to signature. We never found one mm -hmm. fraudulent affidavit. Right, and, I, and I'm hearing that that's the same on the national level as that's well. Right. Now, and some people may think this is provisional ballots, but this is not no. the same as a provisional. No. You, you totally vote different. At, you get to go to the booth and vote privately, totally but that's different. different than a provisional. Yeah, provisional ballot. is uh, only in federal, and again, mm -hmm. They're asking you questions. You don't remember if this is the right precinct. You're nowhere to be found. You're not on there at all when you're not you come on in active there. list. You're not on inactive list. You, there's nothing to verify with you mm -hmm. on the computer. So, you know, in a, in a, we'll let you sign a provisional mm -hmm. ballot. You have to. It's a mail, a, 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 a mail ballot. Okay. And we allow you to vote. And then, and, and, and then I, as those commissioners, mm -hmm. after the polls close, look at that and determine if it's a valid based on okay. the other information. And so let me just ask you this real briefly. Um, let's talk a little bit about inactive voters. If you are an inactive voter, can you vote? What caused a person to be inactive? Okay. And can you vote if you are considered okay. an inactive voter? One of the most misunderstood concepts and procedures across the country. It is a federal law, the National Voting Rights Act, that, uh, that forces register of voters, or whatever they call it in other states, on an annual basis to canvas Mm -hmm. their voting registration log. So we have 2.8 roughly voters and we through uh, receiving list of motor vehicle registrations or other various things and mm -hmm. services that we uh, uh, right. subscribe to, we verify typically on average 95 percent of our voters are where they're supposed to be in the right precinct. Mm -hmm. So we're only dealing with this five percent right now. Right. If you fall into that five percent and we have reason to believe or the registered voter believes that you're no longer there, mm -hmm. we will send notices into your home. You okay. should respond to that but and say I'm still here. Whatever. If you ignore them, you go inactive. You go inactive. Okay. And then this is the second biggest misconception. Sitting on the inactive list doesn't mean you can't vote. Just it just means up. that we got, when you do come in to vote, mm -hmm. you just show up at the precinct, or I would ex ask people to look on the register voter site, call the register voter, make sure you're registered if you mm -hmm. have reason to believe you're on it. You can go in and rectify that today, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. But it, even if you don't do that, if you show up to vote and you're in the right precinct, they're going to look and see, oh, Ms. Jones, you're on an inactive list. They're going to re-verify your mm -hmm. information, make sure you're in the right precinct. If you've moved inside the parish, they're going to send you to the precinct that you belong. Right. Now, if, but the people that get removed mm -hmm. is after they sit on this list for three, four years. Right. And they exactly. miss two federal consecutive elections. Right. Okay. Then they are removed at the end of the year. Okay. I keep hearing, uh, right. you know, we it's and other states are removing people before November 6th. That, that, that's right. against federal law. Okay. 90 days, you cannot remove anybody. Okay, well, to. we've covered a lot, and I think all this is going to be very helpful to make Thank sure you. people are able to get out and exercise their right to vote on November 6th. And just to reiterate, the last day to register to vote is October 9th, 2012. Yes, Early voting starts on October 23rd, 2012, yes. and it goes on for seven days. So thank you very much, Secretary Shetler, for coming and sharing this valuable information for Thank us. You. We'll be back in a moment with more of the Legal Roundtable. Stay with us.
Legal Roundtable Voter Education Edition. In this segment, we're talking to Judge John Michael Guidry of the First Circuit Court of Appeal. He's a candidate for Associate Justice of Louisiana Supreme Court. And tonight, he's talking about his candidacy, and he's also talking a little bit about the Voting Rights Act and whether it's still relevant today in light of what are being called voter suppression laws that are being passed in various states across the country. Welcome to the Legal Roundtable, Judge Guidry. I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much. Um, Judge Kidry, I did not go into your background too much, even though I know you have a long, very impressive <laughs> resume you. of public service and in the judiciary, because I wanted you to talk about what you thought was really relevant to your, your race to be the next Associate Justice of the Louisiana Supreme Court. So could you tell us a little bit about your professional background as it relates to professional, your uh, public service and the judiciary? Well, I started off as an assistant uh, parish attorney for the parish of uh, East Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and in that situation, I represented the city mm -hmm. in various legal matters. From there, I was elected to Louisiana House of Representatives. I served one year in the House and then went on to the Louisiana State Senate, where I served five years. So I started out, of course, as a law student learning the law. Mm -hmm. And then once I graduated from law school, I started practicing the law. Okay. Also started teaching at the Southern University Law Center. And mm -hmm. uh, I teach appellate advocacy, and I've been teaching that since 1998. And so uh, as a teacher at the Law Center, I've had an opportunity to help train a new generation of legal scholars, legal minds. Mm -hmm. and and I was fortunate uh, a few years ago inducted to the Southern University Law Center Hall of Fame. Um, so I've basically I've practiced the law, I have taught the law, in the legislature I made the law. And mm -hmm. since uh, I was elected to the Louisiana First Circuit Court of Appeal, I've been interpreted in the law. Mm -hmm. So when the vacancy uh, occurred on the uh, Louisiana Supreme Court, it was sort of a consensus from a lot of people in the community mm -hmm. across uh, varied uh, lines that I should seek the position, uh, the mm -hmm. promotion to Louisiana Supreme Court. Okay. Uh, basically, the Louisiana Supreme Court is an appellate court, and so okay. for nearly 15 years now, I've been doing the work of an appellate court judge. Uh, mm -hmm. We basically review the facts and the law on the civil side and the law on the criminal side, just like the Louisiana Supreme Court. They do a couple of different things. If a law is declared unconstitutional, it bypasses my court to the Supreme Mm -hmm. court, death penalty is imposed, it pat passes my court, goes directly mm -hmm. to the Louisiana Supreme Court, and of course issues dealing with the discipline of lawyers and judges, that goes mm -hmm. uh, directly to the Louisiana Supreme Court. But mm -hmm. with those rare exceptions in a public service commission, with those rare exceptions, mm -hmm. I've basically been doing appellate work just like I would be doing on the Louisiana Supreme Court. Uh, somebody gave me the example, if you were on a job for a long period of time, and as new people came aboard, you supervised them and you trained them, right. then of course when a promotion came up, you thought you would be the person who mm -hmm. should get the promotion rather than the people people that you've been supervising and training. Exactly. Well, the uh, situation is now that the other appellate court judges that are in this race, mm -hmm. um, when they came on the court, I was already there, so I've mm -hmm. had an opportunity to help train them to do the work of an appellate court judge. Right. And of course, the district court judges, I supervise their mm -hmm. work. I basically grade their papers for errors. And then, of exactly. course, the lawyers that are in the race, I basically review their cases. So right. being the most senior appellate judge in the mm -hmm. Louisiana uh, Supreme Court District 5 uh, race, I think that, and I, a lot of people have agreed that it would uh, make sense, a natural, natural progression right. for me to go up to the Louisiana Supreme Court to get mm -hmm. that promotion. Uh, uh, since I've been doing the work and uh, and not only uh, doing the work at the courthouse but I spent a great deal of time in the community uh, primarily in schools and churches right. in civic settings talking to young people saying to them that you know a well-placed yes ma'am and a well-placed no sir getting your education staying away from drugs and alcohol violence mm -hmm. and sexual promiscuity will give you an opportunity to be whatever you want to be in life and uh, exactly. so that uh, being a judge has afforded me that opportunity mm -hmm. uh, certainly to be a judge in Louisiana Supreme Court will just 
broad, broaden the territory that I'll have an opportunity uh, to do that. Exactly. Uh, and so I think judges, all public servants, ought to go beyond what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and give back to the community. Exactly. And so I've done that. So. And, and it seems like you have, and I think you're certainly well known for being in the community as well as for the work that you do in the judiciary mm -hmm. as well. So I certainly agree that it seems like the natural progression. Mm -hmm. Now tell us a little bit about this vacancy that has come up, because I understand that it's been over 20 years mm -hmm. since this particular Supreme court district has even had a vacancy is that correct right chief uh, justice kitty mm -hmm. kimball is retiring mm -hmm. um and as a result of that we have this election where we have eight parishes involved mm -hmm. it's the parishes of east and west feliciana east and west baton ridge mm -hmm. uh point Capi, uh iberville livingston and ascension so it's a very large uh district right. uh but again the vacancy is created as a result of justice kimball leaving the court after a number of years of service mm -hmm. and so we have an opportunity a rare opportunity as you pointed out right. to elect a new justice uh, to the court. And I think mm -hmm. what people want in a justice on the Supreme Court is what I have to offer. That is a judge who has served, mm -hmm. who has experience, who has served with honesty and integrity, mm -hmm. who has given back to the community uh, right. through various public uh, service opportunities. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I basically offered myself uh, to run in this race. Okay. And again, encouraged by individuals who said, because you are the most senior appellate judge uh, right. in the district, then it would be a natural progression for you to get that promotion. Right. Now, and you touched on a couple of points. One of them is that you said this encompasses eight different parishes. Correct. Uh -huh. And I know that you have this a, a long history of public service, but I would think that that would be the biggest area in which you've had to campaign in. And so I would just ask, as you have gone about these different parishes and you're talking to people mm -hmm. about this progression on to, the, uh, to be an associate justice of the Louisiana mm -hmm. Supreme Court, what is the primary message that you're trying to get out there mm -hmm. to the people as you're talking to them? Uh, the primary message is that what you want in a judge mm -hmm. is somebody who is honest, somebody who has inter integrity, somebody who mm -hmm. has character, somebody who is willing to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And what I'm getting is a lot of young people who are coming to me and saying, you know, you spoke in my fifth grade graduation, right. uh, you spoke in my church, you spoke at this various uh, these various functions in mm -hmm. our community, and you encouraged me to get my education and be respectful, to be an honest citizen, and now mm -hmm they want to you know give me an opportunity to go to another level to right. continue to do that so mm -hmm. I've been uh, uh well pleased with the response right. that I've gotten throughout the district. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me in the newspaper mm -hmm. uh, because I'm speaking throughout the district at various right. churches, various schools. Mm -hmm. And so I, I like to tell people the only time you see me in the paper is when I'm going to some school speaking about anti-bullying or going to some church encouraging kids to do the right thing, mm -hmm. telling them that I want to see them at the courthouse as a lawyer or to replace me as a judge, but I never want to see them there uh, standing before me as somebody who is on their way to a, a, a life of uh, uh, incarceration and exactly. so it really helps me because you know my job is made easier when I can reach young people at the schoolhouse and at the church house rather than having to deal with their cases at the courthouse exactly now and if elected this is a 10-year term correct. on uh -huh. the Louisiana Supreme Court now this particular term is a part of an unexpired term correct right there's six years left on okay. the unexpired term um, okay. and so uh, we will have another election after, after a six-year six period that okay. will be for a 10-year term obviously the election day is November 6 correct. 2012 Right. And um, of course, the last day to register to vote will be October 9th of 2012. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And early voting is October 23rd through 30th. October 30th, correct. with the exception of that Sunday. So mm -hmm. we just want to encourage all of our viewers to get out and actually exercise their right to vote on November 6, 2012. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate you stopping by to talk with appreciate us that. and wish you the very best of luck in, in your in your race to become the next Associate Justice of Louisiana Supreme Court. Well, I appreciate okay. the opportunity and the public service that your program provides to our community. And that's all we have time for on this edition of the Legal Roundtable. Join us next time for the next edition of the Legal Roundtable. Meanwhile, you can always keep up with what's going on with the show at the blog at www.thelegalroundtableshow.com. And if you would like more information about voting or the upcoming election in Louisiana, contact the Secretary of State's office at www.sos.la.gov. Till next time, I'm Shaniqua Gray.